Hi, I'm Tara Nevin, co-founder and director of New Resource Group. This is my partner in crime, Linda Ray. At our recent breakfast, we had a wonderful speaker, John Finlay from Maverick Boutique, speaking about his chaos model. We're really interested and excited in this idea of the complex adaptive operating systems because we actually believe that what's happening for organisations at the moment is that they're not thinking futuristically, they're not agile and this kind of connects in with our A in our steer model. So we hope you enjoy the video as much as we enjoyed the breakfast. So what I'm going to be talking about now is how we use complexity to deal with complexity. Now, for the last couple of hundred years, we've been using pretty much a machine model to run our organisations. Hierarchies still persist, um, giving instructions, orders regarding things as being able to push there, do this, move that. It'll all work if we just do A to B. But there's another way of looking at this, and that is, that is looking at the world as a complex adaptive system. Now, over the last... Over the last 50 years, it's really 50 years since Stafford Beer and Ashby and Conant and so on developed a whole lot of methods in how to deal with complex systems. And yet, by and large, a bit like the, a bit like the uh, story of Duran and Deming, they've been largely ignored until relatively recently when people like Meg Wheatley have brought it to our attention that we're trying to treat human systems as if they're machines. And there's a time to come when we start, should start adopting a new paradigm. So Abby Strauss and I, over the last three or four years, have been working out how to, how to apply the laws of complexity uh, to organisations. And we've gone back and looked at a lot of, the, lot of the masters from the cybernetics field and from the field of um, uh, research operations, that have been, the work that's been done over the last 50 years, and taken that apart and looked at it and applied it to what's going on right now. And the whole idea behind this is to help us create resilient adaptive organisations. Now we know that brains, markets, communities, teams, companies, the moment we try to change something, the whole system changes. Something new happens, unexpected. This is what a complex adaptive system is. Something happens, it moves, it evolves, it changes, it doesn't follow a machine, algorithmic or linear relationship. It's what's called non-linear. If you go back to the old masters, Ashby, Conant, and a more recent one, Yanni Abayam of the New England Institute of Complexity, there are three fundamental laws of complex systems that we can use to control the systems. The first one is requisite variety by Ashby. The whole idea is to match or exceed the complexity of the system. Now, here's an example. Uh, some organisations have C-suites which are monocultures, all engineers or all health workers, right? They, that works fine if it's a technical organisation doing nothing else except that engineering, engineering and engineering or health, health, health. But overall, in terms of the operation of the system, it doesn't have enough diversity to do with a lot of the other complexities that you've got in the world today. Whereas a more diverse uh, C-suite with people from different disciplines is often far better to be able to deal with the complexities that organisations facing. And what Yanni Abayam points out as the health system in America is struggling because it's, it's using the inappropriate ways of dealing with the system. It's trying to use a one size, in the past it's been trying to use a one size fits all approach to a system which is extraordinarily complex. I don't know whether any of you have been watching what's been happening in the last couple of weeks with the, the, the Affordable Care Act and its problems with its website. Well, that's just a microcosm of what's going on. Second, law is a ro you need a robust model of the system, you need a clear picture of how the system works you need, and how it functions. Now we have in our uh, kit bag a couple of models that we use reliably. I'm sure you all have models that you use in your work. These are the, these are the things that you apply. Now sometimes they work really well, sometimes they don't. I'll come to why they, why they work well and why they don't in a moment. We have in our kit bag a thing called the complexity model of change, which is a, gives us a really broad and deep understanding all at the same time of what's happening in the world that explains a lot of the changes, the innovation and so on. We have another one we use quite frequently, which Pat is very interested in his work. Uh, he came to one of our Taming Wicked Problems workshops called Polarity Thinking. Uh, let me ask you a question. Which would you choose, breathing in or breathing out? 
Anyone like to, anyone like to pick one of those? <laughs> no? No? You, you, you're you're going to go for both? <laughs> right. Well, this is the reality. Lots of things in the world that we're dealing with are not choices to be made. They're polarities to manage. And if we have a model of the system which has choices to be made, we'll keep on making mistakes. We'll keep on failing simply because we have a poor model of the system. If you have a model of the system that lungs work only by breathing in, you're going to die. <laughs> okay? Simple as that. Okay. Third one. Match the scale of the approach with the needs of the system. Now, who, there's a whole lot of reasons why we have bureaucracies. Bureaucracies are really good at delivering the same thing to a large number of people reliably every minute of the day, every day of the week, every week of the year. Okay? That's why we have them, because they're extraordinarily efficient. Okay? That's, what, that's what their purpose is. That's, so they are perfectly matched to the scale of the task at hand. You wouldn't use a bureaucracy to start up a new product or service that sort of requires a skunk works, would you? It wouldn't work too well, because first of all, you don't have the right kinds of people in the organisation to address the flexibility, adaptability you need. Nor would you get a whole bunch of guys who run a skunk works to go and run, try to run a big corporation because they don't have the skills. And that's why often when uh, people like uh, the guy who started Facebook or Apple don't... Has anyone seen Job's? The, the story about uh, Job's uh, who founded Apple? The, the diabolical disasters he created when he went from a garage to running a big corporation? He learned it after a while, but to begin... To begin with, he wasn't a good fit. So there are some of the features of complex adaptive systems that we can use, reliably use, just in the same way we can reliably follow a linear path with a machine. It goes around and round and round or follows a particular pattern. Like your car does the same thing every time. If you steer the wheel this way, it'll go that way. If you steer the wheel that way, it'll go the other way. If you put your foot on the brake, it'll stop. Those are reliable things that you can, you can accept and no, it'll work. Within complex systems, there are also patterns that we can rely upon. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of these, but some of them are what we call simple rules of interaction, period doubling cascades, attractors, and phase transitions. We're going to deal with a couple of those today. Okay? Basically, if you, think of a, if you think of a thunderstorm, a thunderstorm starts with a few clouds, uh, the water evaporates, the clouds form, then a whole bunch of those clouds start to get together, form into a thunderstorm, it starts to rotate, it becomes a cyclone or hurricane or typhoon, depending on which part of the world you're in. This is a classic example of a complex adaptive system. It has structure, it has features. So, what do they do? They evolve over time as a result of the interaction of all the parts. They develop rich patterns of complex order. Just like, think of, think of the thunderstorm analogy, the cyclone analogy. Uh, through a process of feedback. The feedback keeps on re-energising it in new ways to reinforce the pattern that's already started to develop. They're self-organising, they have no central controller. There's no one over here saying, direct the thunderstorm to do this or direct the thunderstorm to do that. Nothing, this doesn't happen that way. The thunderstorm does it all on its own. It also involves phase transitions, or, which are which are, you know in the thunderstorm when the, the clouds go from little clouds to then they become a thunderstorm, they then become a cyclone? Those are phase transitions. That's when it goes, undergoes structural change. These same kinds of structural changes exist in human systems as well. And we'll be dealing with some of those today. One of the things we know from complexity is simple rules of interaction lead to complex results in these new emergent systems. You know the exercise we did before, where we got you all to put up your thoughts? <coughs> Do you notice at the end, out of that emerged some kind of order? In all of our thinking, we very, very quickly got to a couple of key critical issues about what we were all thinking. That's an example of emergent order. Okay? So, here's an example. Birds flocking or fish shoaling. What birds and fish do is they follow a rule. Stay so far away from the next bird, or both on the left and right, and fly at a particular angle. And when someone changes their direction, you follow. So those are the simple rules of interaction. Um, there's a wonderful 
thing called the Mandelbrot set, which as a result of this very simple formula, go online sometime and have a look. Go for a fly through the amazing complexity of this particular thing which follows this very simple rule of interaction. It's what it is, it's recursive. You get feedback in the system that gives you a new pattern to the next round of things that you're fed back into. Okay, so you constant feedback in the system using this formula causes new stuff to emerge. Extraordinarily rich patterns like this. In teams, it, when you talk to someone else in the words like, you must, or you must, okay? You know, the old, the old language of hierarchy or control, it builds up resistance, doesn't it? Okay? <laughs> He's done that to me. Um, but if I say, so what if we? Maybe, what if we? It changes the dynamics. So we actually play, I spend a lot of time looking at how teams evolve and develop. Now teams actually, when they go from being a group, we know it is forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. This is actually a phase shift. This is a transition from one state of organisation of the system to a much more complex and higher functioning state. This is what happens when your football or netball team performs brilliantly. They look like everything they do can't be a mistake. They look like everything's going perfectly simply because they're coordinating well and they're hearing each other and learning from each other through feedback loops all the time. So something amazing is happening. So that's another example of simple rules of interaction. Now, I know this is going to be a bit hard, but I'd like us to all go out there and I'd like us to perform a little experiment. Any two people, anywhere in the whole of the group, and when we've finished this activity, I want you to be equidistant from those two people. So, for example, uh, Andre here and Amanda. So. This is, this is not equidistant. I'm closer to Amanda than I am to Andre. So I want to end up the, like this. Or I could be like this. As long as I measure them as being that far away. Okay? Got the idea? When, you've, when you are equidistant from those two people, I want you to stop and just wait till everyone else is done. So how long do you think this is going to take? Okay, so remember? You start moving slowly, and when we finish, just stop when you're equidistant from the two people. <laughs> and we'll have a discussion about this afterwards. Already? Off we go. That was about one minute and 30 seconds. So what do you think would have happened if I put one of you in charge? Every time someone moved, right, you got some feedback that they'd moved, didn't you? So you had to move, right? So the system kept on adapting and evolving as a consequence of the feedback in the system. It's what's called recursion. So the systems, human systems, every time someone changes something, like on a project, the moment you change one specification, it doesn't seem very much, but it can throw the whole project totally out of kilter simply because that one little change might have lots and lots of other dependencies. Now, we had a system there where we had something like there's 20 of us roughly, each of us picked two. There are 80 dependencies in that system that we are dealing with, 80 things that are going to constantly change as a result, 80 relationships that are going to change as a result of our shifting around, okay? Which is a lot of stuff that you would have to manage if you were trying to manage it from a control or hierarchical perspective. But we didn't do that. We just allowed the simple rules of interaction to do it for us. And in fact, this is one of the lessons that we have learned in our work, and we're doing some research in Canberra this coming year around complexities of simple rules of interaction. You'll find simple rules of interaction in things like um, the imp world of improv, I work in New York with the East Side Institute. A, I think, did you meet them, Kerry? No, where's Kerry? Oh, Kerry's disappeared from him. Kerry went and visited, I think, the East Side Institute in New York. They, they use improv as part of the way of engaging with the world and transforming organisations. It has many simple rules of interaction in it. Uh, what, everything I need to know I learned in kindergarten is a classic. In the school education space, think pair, square, share, or 
uh, uh, a lot of these kinds of monomics that we use for orchestrating and organizing children to do stuff are simple rules of interaction. 